Swedish Kultur. I come from Portugal. Uh, I'm professor at the University of Lisbon, uh, and I'm doing the doctorship in the University of Coimbra. And I'm going to uh, present you uh, a study about the digital operation costs. Uh, concerning especially the, the questions about science, science education and uh, investigation and development. Uh, due to the massification of digital technology, global use and the data revolution uh, that brought more volume, complexity and importance to data, uh, there were changes in the way to store, pre preserve, assess and share information. First, private. Uh, this information was not only concerned about primary data but also published papers. And so, with this uh, brought in a greater perception of the importance of data in the concerning the open science and scientific data and uh, this allowed to initiate an uh, open science movement. So, this open data uh, led to the need of more transparency reproducibility, more efficiency in the, process, in the scientific process and an increase in the scientific uh, production. Obviously, this also brought a large amount of data from every scientific domain with data-intensive uh, background, new methodologies for data processing and big-scale uh, big cooperation projects with tremendous budgets uh, dealt by public and private consortia and this is basically what we mean by big science. Uh, so, this big data, we know that it's a great number of records, diversified in their nature, they, they could be written reports, digital non textual data sets, like the raw data that needs to be published into increasingly more but refined data. But this an endangered investment in resources and time due to its volume, complexity, dynamic problems, distributed storage, shared custody, digital data vulnerabilities and impairing reproductibility costs. So this requires approaches that ensure its maintenance, reuse, valorization. Obviously, this means we need to do some digital curation of this data. So, we must know what is the origin of this word curation. Uh, its origins are from the Roman law, uh, they are also used in Middle Ages by the Church and in the modernity this happened, uh, begins to be used in museums and uh, art uh, uh, venues. So, in the 80th, 90th, the late uh, 20th century, it starts to, uh, it begins to use the, uh, the term data creation as management of scientific data and in the early uh, 2000, uh, 2000 uh, begins to be used as digital data create, uh, creation since that uh, there's a report from a task force concerning this problem and also the uh, beginning of the Digital Operations Center in the, the UK. So this basically tells us that creation is maintenance, preservation and realization of scientific data used throughout their useful uh, life cycle, management of amounts of data, music, expensive effort and investments in time and skills. And also, a long-term management uh, of digital contents that pass from a passive preservation to an active creation. Obviously, this is things that are found in early 
uh, authors uh, because mainly what we must see uh, in creation is that it's a part of a holistic view of the data life cycle that depends on creation's context and implies different agents and interdisciplinary activities. So, problem here is context about the data, how it is created, how it can be used uh, when it is gathered and afterwards what can we do to reuse that data and that data can be reused in other science projects that have nothing to do with the earlier uh, the beginner uh, project so this requires planning, management, business policies system, system, uh, sorry, sustainability planning and risk management which implies transparency and identification of investment partners cost investments, tangible and tangible benefits and mitigation strategies obviously this is only possible when this is endorsed by an institution with resources and competence. It needs human resources, financial resources, in and one technological background and infrastructure so that it can really um, do something about the creation and, uh, of digital. Uh, data. So, uh, concerning the costs, the, the first uh, attempts began in the 1990s. Uh, it, they tried to assess and define the cost of several variables across life cycle uh, stages. In the early 21st century, there is a new uh, round of um, investigation that brought us uh, Open Archival Information System, OIS, <coughs> very known for those who work with digital repositories, uh, and, uh, and the DCC Lifecycle, which was the base for later cost models. Uh, in 2015, Portuguese model for a shared structure of digital continuity which was created by the Directorate General of Library Archives and Books. Obviously this requires financial viability and long-term budget planning to support the necessary digital preservation and expenditures. Uh, obviously the early phases cause the lack of consensus and engagement in contexts other than its practice community. <laughs> so, problem is that calculation is one of the weakest links of data management and this increases the difficulty of optimizing the variable budget. So, we have some questions we have to uh, answer in this part, which is our by the fact that big data and big science research benefited from financial support which helped obviously control the experimentation's cost but supporting agents are urging research bodies to preserve and grant long-term access to these contents uh, and we are talking about large amount of data being that institutions must foresee and include the needs of digital creation in their, their research budget. But also it is difficult to pinpoint the exact cost of the, this digital creation and there are problems trying to obtain financing and desire to convince decision makers and managers that are used to track and control costs. So, the majority of these cost predictive models simply don't reflect reality and costs can be detached from the environment where the contents are produced and they depend on third party uh, interests Requ this obviously requires understanding of uh, the meaning of digital creation the need to study now different approaches 
and different react uh, reactions uh, amongst producers, users, and managers. So, following this narrative, the research was simply a collection of bibliography references containing the terms digital creation cost in English and Portuguese on the online web of knowledge and the Portuguese repository for open access. The results were uh, 11 on the uh, online library of knowledge and uh, 36 on the Portuguese repository for open access. The concerns expressed in the bibliography were organized According to a proposal stemming from a view of the CC life cycle and the OAES reference model. Meaning that we brought together these two uh, models. Since the DCC life cycle discusses the issues from the perspective of the digital operations object, and the OAES reference model specifically concerns about the system that supports the digital operation of those objects. And I'm saying this because it is impossible to preserve, preserve or curate digital information without a repository. Simply uh, So we systemized the research because there are <coughs> links between the two models. We found, for instance, producer and creator receive ingest early. They are both on the on both models. Uh, there are elements that are also common to both models, like cost models, model usability, etc., etc. And these elements are related to aspects such as infrastructure and sustainability, which are key elements to do a uh, uh, really curation uh, of data. So, the model graphically is something like this. Okay. We have the OIS reference model part, the DCC lifecycle model, and the other uh, elements that are not in the graphical mode, but are included on the documents where those uh, uh, graphics are uh, included. So, this is a, a present pro proposal in which it introduces a perspective that is not only limited to digital objects and their life cycle, neither to systems with creation mission, and assumes the need to merge both standpoints in the cross view of cost models and data management plans and policies. And this approach still requires refining since these models possess numerous flaws. Uh, it's kind of obviously that every model is wrong, some models are useful as pertaining reality. Uh, conclusions. First, the life cycles concept of digital operation also highlights preservation problems that are hard to isolate from other elements. This approach has effects on the modeling of costs despite the absence of a well-structured functional model and agreement on acceptable accountable principles, we found a paradigm shift from a black box perspective to the identification of cost and attempts to standardize predictive models for institutional use, which promotes transparency and accountability and capturing the interest of potential founders. Uh, we found a clarification impulse which grew with the advent of global financial crisis and an overall awareness that costs can be isolated from their context. Also, international research on digital operation monetarization found that in Brazil this is um, this area of expertise is more uh, found in academic cases and in Portugal is found more in active participation in international research teams and development of cost modeling. 